बसमीम असल डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑन मैट लैब सिमुलेशन ऑफ कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस पेपर अबाउट डिस्क्रीट टाइम फास्ट टर्मिनल स्लाइडिंग मोड कंट्रोल फॉर परमानेंट मैगनेट लीनियर मोटर्स द स्पेशल थिंग अबाउट दिस पेपर इज़ दैट द स्टेट स्पेस प्रजेंटेड इन दिस पेपर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सिमुलेट is not in continuous time but it is a discrete time state space and the controller is also discrete time so with this video you will uh, hopefully learn how to implement discrete time uh, feedback control systems in matlab which is basically easier than implementing continuous time so this paper has been published in ieee transactions on industrial electronics in 2018 uh, basically the december of 2018 so it's uh, fairly recent abstract uh, so this paper presents a positioning uh, position tracking control for a linear motor and uh, for discretization they have used eilers discretization technique which is one of the simple uh, techniques uh, for for converting continuous time state space into discrete time improved uh, discrete time fast sliding mode control method has been developed in this paper and rigorous analysis has been performed uh, which is which means that they have performed some mathematical analysis we will not go into the detail of mathematical analysis but what we will do here is that we will be indulging into numerical simulations so uh, skipping all the introductory part and everything uh, going back uh, going straight to the mathematical model so continuous time model of the permanent magnet linear motor is uh, a second order uh, state space system where x1 dot is equal to x2 and x2 dot is equal to some constants multiplied by x2 and some other constants multiplied by the control and they have also assumed some disturbances acting on the motor as well this is actually this paper is very nicely written and all the equations and parameter values are nicely presented it is very important while doing research that you select a good paper where all the equations and everything is there for you to reproduce the results of the paper so that you can move forward and you know advance the state of the art Uh, so the, these are some definitions of uh, constant parameters in terms of motor parameters and this is some uh, you know f of capital f of t is the disturbance divided by mass which is basically normalized uh, type of disturbance then they define the error signals e1 and e2 uh, remember this that x1 is the position and x2 is the velocity for the linear motor and then uh, there are the error dynamics are given in equation 5 and then they have discretized this model and this is the discretized model uh, for the error dynamics that we are going to use in our simulations then they have uh, presented uh, different uh, you know sliding surfaces and uh, uh, relevant controls and they have also proposed their own control as well so one of the controls that we are going to discuss today is this uh, terminal sliding mode control law which is the discrete time terminal sliding mode control law and um, there is a theorem uh, regarding this uh, here is the uh, i think it's up here here is the theorem for error uh, dynamical system in equation 7 under the discrete time terminal fast terminal sliding mode control law 24 uh, the some boundedness or stability or properties are guaranteed and then you know we are going to use uh, the same controller for the reference tracking and at the and similarly another controller that we are going to implement is the controller in equation 34 which is this one the only difference between the two controller is that there is a disturbance compensation here in the controller for equation 4 uh please do remember that uh, in these videos i do not cover the details of the paper uh, i only cover the part that is relevant for recreating the results or simulation of the current feedback control uh, systems i highly encourage you to uh, search this paper download this and uh, study the paper and then recreate the simulations uh, using this video and then you will have the maximum benefit another nice thing about this paper is that they have also laid down all the steps in doing 
for doing the simulation uh, step one is to obtain the discrete time model which they have provided in the paper and then step two is to choose the discrete time uh, terminal mode um, uh, fast terminal sliding mode surface which is provided in equation 21 and the third step is to uh, select your control algorithm there is a control algorithm without disturbance compensation and there is a control algorithm with disturbance compensation we are going to uh, see both of these these are some parameter values and simulation results this is the uh, model of the disturbance that they have used in the simulation there is a frictional force and there is a ripple uh, disturbance so both the equations of the frictional uh, force and uh, the ripple disturbance are provided with all the parameter values and they have also provided us the sample period so with all this information in the paper nicely uh, presented we are all set to recreate some results and uh, implement the fast terminal sliding mode control presented in the paper so let me go to uh, the MATLAB file so first of all the usual commands CLC clear all close all these commands are used for uh, uh, just uh, CLC clears all the data that might be appearing in the command window and clear all uh, clears all the previously defined variables so that no there is no variable clash close all closes all the MATLAB figures that are already open then we have uh, the parameter values from the paper mass re uh, resistance kf ke h the sampling time these are all provided in this paper so i have uh, uh, obtained all these parameter values from the from the paper so the, you can see here that these kf ke mass resistance are provided and h uh, the sampling is also provided on, uh, at the end of this uh, the same page then we have uh, so then we have uh, the definitions of a and b and c1 the values of c1 c2 these are uh, these some control related parameters and a and b are defined here above in this paper so if you go up uh, here they have defined this a and b so these are used for uh, uh, simplifying the equations and then we need to uh, initialize some uh, vectors because in MATLAB uh, we are going to use for loop for the implementation of uh, discrete time state space for solving the discrete time state, uh, state space uh, feedback system so we need to in initializing these vectors uh, u error 1 error 2 uh, xr dot xr dot is the derivative of the reference value for position this is the second derivative of the reference value for position this is time t this is continuous time t uh, and then uh, f will be the the normalized form of the disturbance similarly there is a reference value for the position these are this is all initialization so i have initialized all the vectors as uh, um, it's a column vector with 2001 rows uh, why 2001 rows uh, because the time period that they have selected is 0 0.005 seconds and the results uh, that are presented in the paper these results are for 10 seconds so we need to uh, run the state space for 2000 samples and then uh, we have this uh, further these parameters all of these parameters are given in the paper and then we start the for loop for solving the state space equations first of all the continuous time will be uh, tk plus h h is the sampling time all right so next is uh, this is time and then we need to define the reference value the reference signal that we are going to use and this is given in the paper is uh, five times the sine of t so we write it uh, x uh, reference k plus one so initial value for the reference will be zero and uh, then 
the next sample at the next sample or the following samples the reference value will be uh, sine of t and then there is a derivative of the reference the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is again sine with the negative sign so this is what i have written down here now this is the uh, control equation so this is equation 24 so if you go here uh, equation 24 1 over h times b and 1 plus c 1 h minus h a etc etc so this is what it is I have written the same equation here 1 over h b into 1 plus c 1 h minus h a uh, multiplied by e 2 and so on so this is the whole equation let me maximize this so this is the 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 control equation from uh, the paper and then this is the dynamics of e 1 and dynamics of e 2 this is equation uh, 7 so this is what is given here uh, this is I have uh, put it put the same equation in the MATLAB code and then there is uh, x1 so uh, since the e1 and e2 have been defined in such a way that uh, if I go up here e1 is the reference value minus x1 and e2 is the reference value derivative minus x2 so x1 is reference value minus e1 and x2 is reference value minus e2 and uh, remember that this is uh, the initial values for everything is zero so the for loop is used to calculate the next value based on the previous value and uh, this is the next value for uh, the disturbance the force friction uh, which is given here uh, let me go to that place uh, here it is equation number 40 and 41 is coming up next so this is equation 40 and then we write equation 41 for the for the disturbance and then the overall disturbance is uh, force of friction plus ripple divided by m as uh, is presented so this is all you need to simulate the uh, state space and the next thing is uh, just to plot the results so in order to plot the results we can plot uh, time versus x1 which is time versus position and in the same figure we can also plot time versus the reference value so we can compare the position and the reference value then we can turn on the grid and define the axis so i have defined the so define axis command is the start of the x-axis end of the x-axis start of the y-axis end of the y-axis so x-axis I have taken from 0 to 10 because I know that these 2000 samples are for 10 seconds and uh, y-axis is from minus 5 to 5 because I know that the reference is 5 times sine of t which has the magnitude between minus 5 and 5 so that's why I've chosen axis to be like this in figure 2 I plot the error and I turn grid on and this is another way to define the axis if you don't know the numbers uh, then you can define the axis that uh, t is going to be on x-axis so the x-axis will start with the minimum value of t and it will end at the maximum value of t and so e1 is going to be on the y-axis so start of y-axis is minimum of e1 and end of y-axis is maximum of e1 and then now we have written all of this code you can see here that in continuous time in the uh, matlab code for continuous time state space we define the ode function uh, separately and we call ode 45 in the script file separately uh, so uh, in the discrete time state, state space we do everything in just one file we don't need a separate function file to write down the dynamics and we run this and after running this uh, i'll just change the directory uh, this is these are the results you can see here that uh, this is figure one where uh, the blue line and the dotted red lines are completely overlapping which means that uh, the reference is uh, perfectly being tracked and the other uh, graph is the graph of the error you can see that the magnitude of error is uh, 10 raised to the power minus 4 
and it ranges between uh, you know uh, minus 1 to 12 uh, or minus 1 to 13 into 10 raised power minus 4 so similarly this was the um, file for uh, implementing uh, terminal sliding mode control in discrete time for linear uh, motor uh, similarly you can copy the same code here i have copied the same code in this this is another file where i have uh, instead of using equation 24 i have used equation 34 so this is equation 34 the only difference between 24 and 34 is this term so this term is additional uh, you can see here that in uh, in the line number 17 in this expression uh, this term is actually different from what was uh, written in the this this is the previous file and this is the new file the only difference is this term in the control and in order to calculate fh uh, you have to first uh, initialize fh uh, here uh, this is again something different and then you have to have this if else situation where you define fh because fh is defined in terms of the previous values of the errors and previous values of the control there are no previous value if k is equal to 1 initially there are no previous values then after k is equal to 1 you have uh, this equation this is basically equation number 17 of the paper if you go to the paper uh, this is equation 17 and this is what i have written here on uh, uh, line number 15 and then uh, let me see uh, if you look at this two, uh, this uh, so this is what this is what we have already uh, seen equation 24 and this is what now we are going to see equation 34 plus uh, 17 and if you run this file so run this so you can see here that with this controller although you can not uh, differentiate uh, this graph with the naked eye but in this graph you can see here that previously the error was between minus 1 to 13 into 10 raised power minus 4 and now the error is uh, mostly between uh, plus minus 1 times uh, 10 raised power minus 34 so definitely the error has been reduced so you can also compare these results uh, in different ways you can create a function out of uh, this file and uh, call and the another function out of this file and call both functions in a third file where you compare uh, the error plots as uh, they have uh, done in the paper so if you look at this paper the results of uh, the paper so there is a perfect uh, tracking by all of the three controllers that they have implemented and there is a step response that we have not discussed uh, instead we have discussed this uh, sinusoidal response and there they have compared the error due to PID, error due to uh, LSMC and error due to their own proposed controller so L is for I think linear SMC so if uh, they have uh, compared their uh, terminal sliding mode with the linear sliding mode so this is uh, all for today i hope that this video shall be useful for you in uh, recreating the results of this paper uh, but in general uh, i am hoping that this video will be useful for you if you are implementing discrete time uh, sliding mode control or discrete time any control uh, using discrete state space uh, for your research and also in order to try different controls in this code you all you have to change is uh, replace the control equation with your new control equation and then you are all set uh, once again thank you for uh, watching the video and i hope that uh,